Today I'm going to try to build a city in the middle of the ocean, starting with just this one square of land. It's the island start challenge. Normally when you play cities skylines, you're building on the ground, but what if there were no ground? Instead, I installed a bunch of mods and I leveled an entire map below sea level except this one square, which is just barely above sea level, and connected it to the mainland only by this one extremely long and tenuous bridge. I set three goals. One, could I build a city in the water that was both profitable and happy by expanding the island? Two, could I reconnect the roadways and re-establish regional traffic? And three, maybe the most difficult, how long would it take to refill the entire landscape with dirt again instead of water? I started on February 24th, 2026. I guessed if I couldn't get it done in about 100 years, then it was pretty much worthless. So that was my end goal. The starting money, $300,000. I start off with a few basic needs I knew I'd require to get the city populated. Power plant, roads, water pump for the clean water, drainage for poop, and I zoned everything. Right away, you're, you're not making money and we needed to establish positive cash flow before we hit zero dollars or we'd be in major trouble in need of a financial bailout which we just didn't have. I terraformed the land to expand our borders. Unfortunately, any time you do this, it causes a massive tidal wave that floods the city. Since I had decided to dump the sewage onto one side of the island directly into the ocean, it was creating a tide of doo-doo that was flowing toward the drinking water, meaning it was a race against time. Keep expanding the island's arms to contain the tainted waters and build our civilization around procrastinating to clean up the poop. Thus, by defunding the hospital and police, we were actually able to secure a positive tax cash flow and build a landfill where we put even more of the garbage that was piling up. In the midst of all this, I built a medical clinic to make sure everyone stayed alive, and then I raised taxes to keep expanding and bring in more people. Demand was high. Even I didn't think our society was very good, but people just kept streaming in like refugees until we broke a bustling population of 2,000. Things were looking good, except for the giant growing poop stain in the ocean. It was lowering property values, but our people were too dumb to notice. There were perks to being uneducated, and at the end of the day, it was our poop stain. By four years in, I decided we'd need to start funding municipal services, or we would certainly suffocate ourselves with the massive pile of untreated sewage we were creating in the ocean. So I built an elementary school to educate people to eventually clean up the problem. The island's residents got smarter. I expanded more. Now it wasn't just tidal waves, but tidal waves of doo-doo water washing up in the streets. On the bright side, fortunately this meant we didn't require a fire department, since everyone's house was flooded just with raw sewage. And though it wasn't pretty, it was growingly profitable. I was halfway to my first goal, make a profitable city. Now just to get these people happier. We built a dog park. They loved it. It helped them ignore the pressing concern of ecological disaster, and in time, they had educated themselves enough to build an eco-friendly water plant, pewing out clean, clear water instead of the tainted crap they had into the ocean. We'd stemmed the tide, and that being said, we'd still have to clean up the brown water, and it remained there on the horizon as a reminder of our tainted past. So by 2033, our city had turned profitable and eco-friendly. It was time to provide our residents with fun, recreation, the amusement park. Unfortunately, everyone tried to steal by entering without paying. So I erected a perimeter wall to make people pay at the main gate. Success! Demand and property values soared in nearby districts. The citizens were happy, the poop was moving away from our shores, and the amusement park was fun. And so with the seed of a sustainable civilization planted, I began gradually expanding the island in a slow grind toward completely filling the ocean with dirt. So much ocean before us, it was extremely expensive. Hundreds of thousands of dollars for just a single city block. Not to mention the uh, thousands of innocent lives lost to drowning during the intermittent tidal surges that came alongside it every couple weeks. But it was encouraging to observe the foothold and growth of grass on the shoreline along the freshly dumped sands. By 2035, our population had crested 10,000 and I expanded southward, adding land block by block and accommodating new projects. But now the city was completely full of garbage, so we started just burning it and cleaned up the remaining crap in the ocean with this floating garbage collector. So the city improved. People were happier, we were making money, and we were filling up the land. It was kind of a grind, but what about connecting the highways? Well, it turned out we had to pad those with a landfill too. 
After all, a mile-long bridge costs upward of $150,000 just to build in the first place. It would be cheaper in the long run to just fill the ocean than worry about it later. So I raised the land and unintentionally knocked out some drivers because it turned out I had accidentally terraformed over one of the Earth's elusive blowholes, a point at which the planet pews out water into the ocean. It's tricky to avoid these, but I continued filling up the ocean with landfill, carefully working around them. However, in growing the city, the problems were beginning to multiply. Growing our population, for example, had made traffic unmanageable. So finally, once we had brought down the highways from up in the air and onto the ground, I decided to address the traffic problem in the city entrances. I burrowed down into secret tunnels from the highway exits to let traffic into the other parts of the city, fixing the traffic jams, but also making us extra vulnerable to the constant intermittent flooding underground and nonsensical dangerous intersections. But as the problems multiply, our tools grew. Now we're making nearly $40,000 a week in taxpayer money, so that after 22 years of terraforming, we had reached out our landmass to touch the north border of the square that our city inhabited. An exciting milestone, but along with the growth came another problem. The power demand was getting so high that natural gas was no longer scaling effectively to meet the city's needs. The solution was nuclear power plants. Unstable and liable to blow up at any time, and right in the middle of one of the most populated and commonly flooded areas filled with innocent people at work. For all those drawbacks, the city did start to produce a surplus of power, slashing citizens' energy bills, raising demand, and necessitating the link-up of yet even more highways with a nice cloverleaf intersection, weaving together the underground and overground roads. Then I took a moment to just step back and admire the city. So much progress we had made from an embryonic square to this churning terramorphic expanse. Landfill. 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 Something blew up in the nuclear power plant, so we just built another one in the year 2057. As an apology to the residents, I lowered taxes and built them a zoo, causing a whole flood of new demand. Then a literal flood, because I accidentally caused a tsunami by terraforming like this. It was okay, we had water pumps, and I had finally paved the city into a bona fide grid for smooth traffic flow. At this point in time, I knew it was going to take a while to generate the tax funds required to fill the rest of the ocean with dirt, so I decided to just leave my computer running overnight. And I woke up uh, after another 50 years with 14 million dollars, which it so happens still wasn't enough money, so I had to go out and do some errands while I left it running again. Finally, and that was just about enough money. I checked back on my computer, and we had enough to fill up the rest of the ocean. Another milestone and another goal completed. But I'd waited so long that everyone in town was dead. Or at least, there were a lot of dead bodies lying around. Apparently, some people insisted on being buried in a cemetery rather than the eco-friendly route of cremation. So I started building more graveyards to house the dead, but then I ordered them to dig up the dead bodies to the crematoriums to just burn them anyway. We all need to make sacrifices for each other in this society. Otherwise, the city would have eventually just turned into one big graveyard. We aimed to raise efficiency by putting the crematorium next to the graveyard, next to the elder care facility. I think citizens made the implicit connection. It was brutal, but also logistical. With most of the landscape terraformed, the only remaining bodies of water were those needed to empty out the few water blowholes we had discovered into the sea. I connected the dots, forming the backbone of our river system. Now it wasn't stagnant water, but roaring rapids that could safely flush the poop out into the ocean. Back to my original goals. 1. I had terraformed the land. Check. 2. I had connected all the highways, cleared for travel. Check. And 3. My city was now profitable. but. No one was happy. Men in balaclavas roamed the streets. 50% of our society had dropped out of elementary school or never attended at all. We had only 69% average health. I lamented the fact that nearly a hundred years had passed and I hadn't even taken care of anyone. Yes, I mean it was necessary to feed people and secure a brighter future, but I'd built a city that was just a factory to produce money to fill up the ocean and flush away poop. What if our whole civilization was just one big glorified toilet bowl. I mean, there was literally a business called Customer Service Services. I had created a fake economy based on nothing, acting like you're working. What was all this expansion, logistics, focus on GDP when deep down our people were just 
quietly miserable. So I gave them what they deserved. Zoos, parks, airports, subways, things to get them around and make the most of their sad little lives. I guess I'm just trying to say, in the words of the gorillas, don't get lost in heaven. We had everything we wanted. We built this expansive economic powerhouse, but at what human cost? Anyway, it's important to stop and smell the grass and the roses along the way. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Thanks to my patrons who surf the tsunamis of life with me. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Until next time, my friends.